Hi, it's Alex here again from True Wealth Property. Just joining me today is Paul Sell, the financial advisor from Ascendancy Planning that helps us with our Domacom deals. Thank you, Paul, for joining us. Thank you for having me, Alex. It's good, good. We've got a bit of an exciting uh, proposition today for our investors out there, and I wanted you to just walk us through some of those numbers just to um, explain how it all works. And it, it, it's a very expensive project, don't get me wrong, uh, but it's a development proposal. It's a fairly big site with some really exciting returns. So obviously the, the forecast annual rate of return uh, on this project, which has been sort of, we, we've gone through the process with Domicom getting this number verified. What are we looking at here as the total, uh, assuming 100% occupancy, what's the total yeah. rate of return we're looking at, Paul? Yeah, look, sure. And um, just to clarify my role here, yeah. um, I'm not making any representation as to these numbers. These numbers have been supplied by the developer, by yourself. Yep. But I've done the mass yep. and I've had a real good look at it, um, got my formula sorted. So And we've verified this with... Well, it's, well. it's been verified with yep. Domacom as well, yep. um, but just so we're clear, I'm not um, underwriting these numbers. But yeah. this all comes through, you're fully tenanted, um, you're sitting at a net annual return of 20.02%. So let's, let's call it 20. All, 20% after all expenses. Yeah. After all expenses, yeah. um, agents fees, letting fees, all repairs and maintenance, the whole lot. The whole lot. We'll break that down. I want to go through those numbers with you on the reason. So we're starting off with the, the purchase price for the actual development itself. Now, there's a lot of things to understand in, in development world. Purchase price and the gross realizable sort of value of the property, two different things. I might buy this thing at $7.7 .7 million is the total package price. But the total valuation come completion uh, could be nearer and nine or ten million dollars because once it's been developed we've taken a, a, a raw plot of land we've uh, developed approved it we've building approved it constructed it and then we've got something that's tenanted generating a 20 percent return which is uh, insane um, how do these costs break down let's have a look through here so what, what expenses do we have firstly we've I think there's some stamp duty and some other costs. What, what are we looking at there, Paul? Yeah, so obviously the stamp duty, um, 156,000. Uh, that's an estimate, but look, from what you've told me, that would probably Based be a, land, yeah, 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 but probably be right, close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, valuation, yeah. um, there's two valuations there. There is one that is done um, by the bank, yeah. um, who will be lending the trust, the money for this project. Yeah, and these then, aren't three hundred dollar valuations, though, are they? Oh no, they're not. I mean, this is a multi million dollar project. Yeah. Um, and needs some significant investigation as to the valuation before yep. it gets approved. Yep. Um, so two valuations, one by the bank and one by by Dimecom. Yep. Um, the next thing is um, this actually forms a part of the asset of the trust. So. Um, what we've got here is a buffer. So we need to have a bit of a buffer because, you know, I would expect that it's unlikely on day one of turning the key that you've got 100% occupancy. It takes a while to transition to yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a bit of buffer there um, to, to... Pretty healthy buffer. It is $105,000 a month rental. Look, we like to see good redundancy yeah. in the project, okay? Now, I would expect that you would be looking to fill this uh, project pretty quickly with tenants. Yep. Um, but that does form a part, uh, um, part of the asset of the overall trust. Yep. So that's a good a good thing there. Yep. Um, the next fee here is, uh, well there's two fees here, there's the your fee that you're paid yep. and there's our fee that our firm has paid. Yep. Um, our fee, I'll talk to our fee, this is for being involved in this project, bringing it together talking to the clients, opening accounts. Yep. Um, a lot of work that we do behind the scenes with Domicom that um, clients may not be aware of. Yep. So um, so there's our fee there of 128,000. So so this would, let's talk about the sort of clients that you can help then in yes. this scenario just while we're here. Let's say I've got some cash or I've got some money inside my super fund or I've got money in equity in another property yep. or, or something. Talk me through what you can do and how you can help our clients. Okay, so what we can do is um, usually when a client's coming to us and they're new, look, they're a little bit unfamiliar with the platform, they're a little bit unfamiliar with how it works, I'm here to provide that explanation 
around that, which I'm licensed to do so. Yep. Um, and show them how it works, the, the fees involved, the, the good things, the bad things, the exit strategy, yep. and, and provide comfort around the platform. So that's one of my one of my roles. Yep. Um, what I'm not doing though is I'm not giving personal advice as to whether they should invest in this project or yep. if it's going to suit their needs. Yep. They would need to get their own independent advice or if they'd like me to provide that opinion, we can go down a different road yep. and, and we can sort that out for them and that would be a different conversation. Like a statement of advice. Sort of thing. Like a statement yeah, of okay. advice. Yep. So the initial call is just explaining how this works yep. and if the client is comfortable and understands and made their own decision on how much to invest, yep. excellent. So there's actually a loan on this as well, is there? So how is that working? Yeah, so um, we've put this uh, project already to the lender and they've indicated that they're happy to lend so it still has to go through due diligence at this stage but yep. the the loan application fee is what the lender charges yep. um, to for the for lending the money pretty much standard sort of rates for a commercial Absolutely. Loan. I mean, a lot of the investors at home might be looking at this like wow this is very very expensive but to get a commercial return of 20 percent this is I mean is this extortion by the banks or is this sort of standard it's practice? It, it, look, from my experience, and I'm not a mortgage pro, but from my experience for this type of lending, this yeah. is a standard fee. Yeah. And um, part of what we're doing is disclosing all this to clients anyway, so if they yeah. don't want to invest don't because they to. don't like the fees, they don't yeah. have to, but they're making... But I really like the 20% return. I'm sure they really like the 20% <laughs> return. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're just being transparent with everything yep. that um, is costed on this project. Yep. So what, what we're looking at there as well, the the interest that's been calculated, now that's during the construction period, that 9.95%. Now, you know, back to my old mortgage yes. broking days when, when I was doing broking, uh, the first drawdown for this purchase will actually be the cash contribution to the purchase. So that loan won't be drawn down fully from day one it's a progressive drawdown yep. as we go through those construction, usually about five stages through there that we would be invoicing to the lender yep. to get some uh, some money from them when that money is due. So that 9.95%, 12 months worth of interest does allow for a bit of a buffer in there as well. Yes. Um, so you know, from the, the finance and mortgage side of things, that does include a bit of a buffer. So I'll, I'll talk to that end. but. The syndication fee, what, what's this involved here? What does that Domacom syndication fee involve? Um, this is uh, their first way that they make money. Mm -hmm. um, this is their revenue. Uh, they've put this um, platform together. They have the licenses with ASIC to be able to deliver this property yep. um, trust. Um, so they'd like to be paid and that's what they charge. Yep, fair enough, fair enough. And we've got a, a loan down here, uh, $4,277,625. Yes. So the difference between the loan and the total funds required, purchase price plus all the expenses there is you know, just over $9 million. We've got a loan of $4.2 million, so we need to raise $4,772,000, correct? Yes, that's okay. right. So in terms of that divided by you know twenty five thousand or minimum investment into this uh, into this program is is a lot of people that are potentially talking to now. Is, is there a obviously we know the minimum. Is there is there a cap? Is there a maximum amount that we can invest into this? Or? Yeah, the, there is a maximum amount. It's the capital required. So okay. if if there was an investor out there that said I want to. Um, I want do the whole thing. Seven million dollars put into this project. Yep, they, yep. they could do that. Yep. And once again, they're not on the hook for the loan. They're yep. not borrowing the money, so there may be some advantage there for them. Yeah. Okay. Do that. So I, I think what you worked out for us previously, and this is taking into consideration all of the pro rata expenses and costs and so forth, and uh, mortgage repayments. If we only achieved, uh, you know, occupancy of eight of the 15 units, we're in at sort of break-even point, where, where do we stand? No, on, on eight units, it's, it's better than break-even point. Um, we're sitting at 7.2% net, 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 net return. Net, okay. We always talk in net return terms. Um, so normal property, just to for yeah. people at home, Sydney, Melbourne, 3%, 4% at best gross before all of your deductions, before council rates, water rates, insurances, mortgage repayments, um, 
there, there's some huge sort of deductions there from that three or four percent. You're starting at seven point two percent with with no fees being taken out of that seven point two. That's your net. That, that's that's what you. If you put on a hundred thousand, you yeah, expect seven thousand two hundred dollars. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So if we do get to that fifteen units leased, we're at nine hundred fifty-five thousand dollars a year rental income, which is twenty percent. Yep. That's how we work it. That's incredible. It's really twenty percent on the capital invested, and yep. that's after interest costs yep. um, and all the different. There's a few other different costs in this, which I'm sure you'll get to. In a yeah, yeah. From from the property perspective, you know, property management fees and all that sort of thing. Being in the specialised space of NDIS, which is that um, that obviously the high rental yield market that, that we're getting these returns in, there's a higher property management fee. Now that's not a fee to, to you or, or to I. Um, so, you know, there's $170,000 worth of property management fee um, yes. on the SDA income. And then there's also the reasonable rent contribution property management fee, which is the second part payment under the NDIS. So we're looking at um, all of the costs, council rates, water rates, insurances, repairs and maintenance, the whole lot. total um, amounts of expenses that we've got here. What are we looking at there? Um, well, the gross rent is 1.497, yep. and the net rent after those expenses, this is assuming full occupancy, yep. is 1.262. So the difference is those costs. Yep. Yep. But obviously, if you're only renting eight, you don't have, you only, you only have eight lots of rental fees. Um, yep. But the rates would still be the same because you're still going to pay the rates on the 15 yep. units. So the 1497 reduces the 1262, and then we've got the Domacom. Ongoing fee. Now, yes. what, what are we getting for that time? Come ongoing. What are they? Do you, for you're us? getting the manage, ongoing management of the property trust. So each year, um, well, let's start each month. The net uh, rent that the trust collects is distributed proportionally to the unit holders. Mm -hmm. um, Domacom facilitate that distribution, so your money will land in your bank account. At yeah. the end of the year, um, end of the financial year, or, or probably soon after. Um, you will get a tax statement that outlines the cash that you received during the year. Yeah. It will show you um, non-cash deductions that you can put on your tax return, yeah. such as depreciation is, is the main one. Yeah. Um, so just like if you invest in an AMP property trust and you'd get your tax statement at the end of the year to put in your tax return, Dime are doing that as well. Yeah. Um, notwithstanding that they organise a valuation each year on yeah. that property, okay. um, so that you'll be able to log into the platform, which they also supply for their fee. So you can yeah. log into the platform, and you can get an idea of what your capital is worth. Yeah. You can see historically um, what your payments have been. Yeah. So, um, in my humble opinion, they they do a lot for their money. Yeah, yeah, and with the things like depreciation, how does that work through here? So is that proportionally adjusted to each investor as well? Absolutely, everything's proportional on what you invest. So if you were the one investor, you yep. get all the depreciation. If you invested yep. half, you get half. Okay, so good, 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 good. All right, thanks uh, Paul. And uh, if anyone's got any questions about this further, want to have a chat with Paul or his team, uh, feel free to reach out. We'll uh, put you guys in contact, there should be a link underneath this uh, little podcast as well. And if you've got any questions regarding the property, you can talk to a team member from True Wealth Property. Thanks very much, guys. Take care. Thank you.